My dear community, our world is changing. The COVID-19 pandemic has challenged us as a church to be closer than ever to those who need comfort and hope. As baptized, we feel the call to incorporate ourselves with greater presence in the world of contemporary digital communication in order to generate a new evangelization in its methods, new in its forms, new in its passion, which allows us to reach those who need the comfort and the strength of the Spirit of God. For this reason, we want to consolidate the adequate technical and human team. We want to access the appropriate digital tools and develop the different proposals and contact strategies that make the presence of Christ effective in our community. In order to be able to overcome the challenges of physical distancing and reaching those who need this message of hope. Help us reach more people in a better way, collaborating with our special Faith Connection campaign designed to empower our digital communication projects. Together, we can continue advancing in our journey only with our faith and the joy of knowing that we are not alone is that we can overcome any obstacles. Together, we can continue to make of our church a beacon of light for our society, because we are all St. Augustine. Welcome to St. Augustine Catholic Church. We want to welcome especially all of you who are joining our community for the first time. Today we celebrate the 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please silence your cell phones or any other devices that may disturb our celebration. Stepping out in faith, like Peter does in today's Gospel reading, is often easier said than done. In today's noisy world, we are able to listen God's voice calling us to walk in faith. How are we answering his call? As you pray this week, ask God to be with you and to heal your fear. This Mass is being offered for Pedro J. Caban, Tom Back, the birthday of Paola Londoño. As we begin our celebration, please stand and greet each other.
the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, uh, with a humble heart, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord, let us see your kindness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, truly you are the Son of God. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, whom uh, taught by the Holy Spirit, uh, we dare to call our Father. Bring, uh, we pray, to perfection in our hearts uh, the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. At the mountain of God, Horeb, Elijah came to a cave where he took shelter. Then the Lord said to him, Go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. A strong and heavy wind was rendering the mountains and crushing rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, there was a tiny whispering sound. When he heard this, 
Elijah hid his face in his cloak and went and stood at the entrance of the cave. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I speak the truth in Christ. I do not lie. My conscience joins with the Holy Spirit in bearing me witness that I have great sorrow and constant anger in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites. There's the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, 
the worship, and the promises. Theirs the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, is the Christ, who is over all. God blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. After he had fed the people, Jesus made the disciples get into a boat and proceed him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. After doing so, he went up to a mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was there alone. <clears throat> Meanwhile, the boat already a few miles offshore was being tossed about by the waves, for the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, when the disciple He came toward them walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking in the sea, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and they cried out of fear. At once Jesus spoke to them, take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the waters. He says, come. Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened. And beginning to sing, he cried out, Lord, Save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught Peter and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? After they got into the boat, the wind died down. Those who were in the boat did him homage, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise <clears throat> to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
Does anyone know the Latin word for boat or ship? It's nave or navis, which of course is where we get the word for navy. Does anyone know the Latin word for the main body of a church? Basically, where you are sitting right now? It's called uh, the nave. It's the same word. So we are sitting in the boat of the church. Now, when we want uh, something to go well, we might use the phrase smooth sailing. When confronted with a difficult situation, we might hope for a smooth sailing. Using this analogy, we could say that life itself is like a long journey across the sea. In a spiritual sense, we could say that from the moment we are born, God gives each one of us our own little lifeboat, just big and strong enough for us to safely sail through life. In addition, God gives us the boat of the church to help us navigate uh, through those uh, waters. Sounds nice. But as we learned at a very young age, life is not always smooth sailing. We quickly learned that the storms and winds of life come our way that our little lifeboat is often rocked and buffeted by the many problems and challenges we face in life. Sometimes, when faced with things like illness, death, loss of job, divorce, failure, rejection, or long months of an unexpected pandemic, it can feel like we are sinking, that our little lifeboat really isn't strong enough or big enough to see us through all the storms that come our way. And so, as human beings, we often have a very similar response. In order to combat the storms of life, we begin to think that maybe we should try to turn our little God-given lifeboat into something different, something bigger, something better. For instance, many of us think that if we can turn our little lifeboat into something like a yacht, then our lives uh, would, would be smooth uh, sailing. And so, many of us focus uh, on things like uh, money, possessions, uh, creature comforts, uh, thinking that somehow the more we have, the smoother and easier we can sail through life. This exemplifies the common attitude Money is the key to happiness. Other people want to turn their little lifeboat into a tanker. They often focus only on themselves, thinking that in order to protect themselves from the world, that their needs, their wants, and their happiness must come first. They exemplify the attitude every man for themselves. Other people wanted to turn their little lifeboat into a battleship. They think that life is basically unfair and cruel, and so the only way to survive is to strike back, to be just as unfair and cruel for them 
Life is nothing but one big battle, and by God, they are going to win it. They exemplify the attitude, don't mess with me. Other people want to turn their little lifeboat into a cruise ship. They would rather focus on parties and having fun. They would just rather avoid even thinking about storms or problems. They exemplify the attitude, don't worry, be happy. I think you get the point. We all find a way to cope with the storms of life. If we are honest with ourselves, we probably fit into one of these categories. Sadly, we often forget the simple lesson that Jesus tries to teach us in the gospel today. The only way to survive the storms of life is to reach out and grab Jesus' hand. That no matter what kind of boat we build for ourselves, only he can keep us safe. If somehow we think that we will be masters of our own life uh, by spiritually taking our little God-given lifeboat, which God has already so carefully prepared for each one of us, and try to turn it into a yacht or a tanker or a battleship or whatever, we are only fooling ourselves. Now, even as a priest, I know that when the storms of life come our way, it can be hard, very hard, to trust in God. Like Peter, our faith may be far, far from perfect. Like Peter, the storms of life will frighten us and we too may doubt God's goodness. But like Peter, if we but take that leap of faith, Jesus will be there to catch us. Having a strong faith or believing in a good God doesn't mean that God will stop all the storms of our life from coming our way. No. Rather, it means that no matter what, sooner or later, Jesus will be there to catch us. Like Peter, if we but take his hand, we will not drown. Simple, simple, remember this. No matter what kind of boat we build for ourselves in this life, only Jesus can save us. Only Jesus. My dear community, let us profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. 
for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom we have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With the trust that our faith inspires, we now present our needs to God. For the church, that we may recognize God's presence in both the extraordinary moments and in ordinary events of our lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, to hear our prayer. For all who are recovering from hurricanes, floods, or other disasters, that God will give them courage, ease their pain, and touch the hearts of many to assist them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our families and children nearing the start of the school year, that the Holy Spirit may dispel fears and anxieties of carrying them forward through the challenges that lie ahead. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Amen. hear our prayer. For the sick, especially for those affected with the COVID-19 virus. My God grant them healing and restoration. And for our brothers and sisters who have died, particularly those from the COVID-19, that in die, that be born to eternal life. We offer this Mass for Pedro J. Caban and Tom Back. <clears throat> we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of wind and sea, you calm our fears and bring us peace. Hear the prayers your Spirit inspires us to offer. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the wholesome powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the, the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Augustine, and all the saints who have pleased to you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, uh, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's show the sign of the peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, at this moment, I invite uh, all of you that follow us by Facebook or YouTube uh, to make uh, an uh, spiritual communion. Let us say together. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot uh, at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Just a quick reminder, communion will only be given on the hand. Receive communion in your hand by preparing a worthy throne for our Lord. Please do the following in your pew. Lower your mask. Remove your gloves if you are using any glove. Use your personal hand sanitizer before communion. I recommended an amount that is easy to dry. You will be instructed to come forward for the recession of Holy Communion. By section, we divided our parish in four sections, section A, B, C, and D. The two sections that will receive uh, the Holy Communion first uh, this evening is section a and C. Please wait on your pews and follow the usher's instructions. Keep a space using lines on floor and once you have consumed the body of Christ, put your mask back as you return to your seat. Thank you for your attention.
Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for our announcements. Thank you, everybody, for being with us today. It's another beautiful day. Uh, Attention high school teens, uh, 9th to 12th grade. Youth group will resume uh, September 16th. Uh, registration for form is available online. Please contact our parish office or visit our website for more information. We want to remind you that the registration for our family faith formation program is now open. Uh, please contact our parish office uh, or visit our website for more information. We will have a bilingual mass to celebrate the Feast of the Assumption of the Virgin Mary on Saturday, August 15th at 9 a.m. Praying is the most powerful and significant act we can do for a person, person in need. Whatever your needs are, Prayer provides a strong belief to any situation you may be faced with. We want to pray for you for your intercessions through our virtual parish book of prayers. Please visit our website and click on prayer request button. Together we will pray for your request. Formed the Catholic Faith on Demand. Discover thousands of books, audio talks, movies, documentaries, and studies. Uh, there is something for every member of the family to help them grow closer to Christ and his church. Uh, Form now is available uh, by Apple TV, Android, and iOS. So, and the good news is that we have a free week to enjoy this service. If you are interested, uh, contact Jorge Medina at our parish office to, you know, he will lead you through the uh, forum the subscription. So this is great. Uh, please check this weekend's online bulletin in our website for more information about our parish activities and celebrations. Uh, thank you. Uh, now, everything is online. Yeah. <laughs> I want to thank, to say thank you to all that participated and uh, served uh, in our 24 hour vigil, prayer vigil for the end of the pandemic was great. I, I went to bed <laughs> last night at like at 12.30, from 10 to 12.30, yeah, praying with, it was wonderful, wonderful experience. Uh, you can't find this in other parish, just in St. Augustine, so 24 hours, prayer vigil, was wonderful, great, yeah. Thank you to all our parishioners who are donated online or have mailed their contribution or have placed their offertory envelope in our parish office's door mailbox. Uh, if you did not put your contribution in the basket placed in the narthex uh, when you enter, you can do so when you leave Mass. We also invite you to consider, really consider online giving as a secure and convenient uh, easy way to contribute to our parish. Thank you, thank you. May God multiply your generosity. Greetings to all who follow us on Facebook or YouTube. Thank you for being with us. See you next uh, Sunday. Remember, together we are the church. We are the, in the boat of the Lord. Only Jesus save us. Please stand for our final blessing.
The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The celebration has ended. Go and obey the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.